great small projects. Uh, this initiative is going to be supported by the Department of State's Energy and Mineral Governance Program uh, in order to align with Nigeria's participation in the Global Methane Pledge. United States John on a journey to Nigeria for zero gas emission. We have reviewed that document, taking into cognizance recent happenings and what should be done and judge them from our past experiences. Plus, election security in 2023, no cause for alarm, military assures. Hello and welcome to NTA Network News. I'm Ian Ray, John, and we're live in Abuja. Adeola Komiakere joins me from Lagos. Thank you for joining us. And just to let you know that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website, nt.ng slash live, and all our social media platforms displayed on the screen for updates. Two more strategic road infrastructure projects executed by the Hope Uzodema administration as part of its rehabilitation, reconstruction, and recovery agenda in Imo State have been inaugurated. Also inaugurated was the modernized state assembly complex to provide a conducive environment for lawmaking to enhance good governance and effective service delivery. President Mohamed Buhari, who performed these ceremonies, described the state government's infrastructural revolution drive as worthy of emulation and support. State House correspondent Adam Musambo has the details. This is the second time in 12 months President Muhammadu Buhari will be visiting the eastern heartland since Governor Hope Uzodima came to power about three years ago. Just like the first visit, the president is here to once again inaugurate landmark sundry projects executed by the state government and the reception accorded him was befitting. Among the road infrastructure projects inaugurated include the 36-kilometer dual carriage Oweri Olu Road and the first phase of the 56-kilometer Oweri Okigbe Road as part of deliberate efforts at enhancing the local economy. President Muhammad Buhari also declared open the Imo State Assembly Complex, rebuilt, furnished, and fully equipped with state-of-the-art facilities for effective lawmaking by the legislature as bastion of democracy. Speaking at a reception held in his honor, President Muhammad Buhari described as pleasing that Governor Hope Uzedima has keyed into his administration's infrastructural revolution enterprise, especially in fixing critical roads neglected by previous administrations. It took the sheer determination and the courage of the current government to fix these roads. So I say, bravo to the governor of Imo State. This proves that when leaders are dedicated and focused, much can be achieved for our people. On our part, the federal government will continue to support the government of Imo State to ensure that it continues to provide the dividends of democracy to the people. The federal government, he said, is determined to drive the economic development of Nigeria through the provision of vital infrastructure and evidence abound in critical sectors of the nation's economy. I'm therefore happy to see that the APC administration of Governor Uso Dima is doing similar improvement here in Imo State. I thank the people of Imo State for supporting your governor. I urge you to continue to do so to enable this administration, which he leads, concentrate on the task of good governance. Governor Hope Uzodima, who appreciated President Muhammad Buhari for his magnanimous disposition to the eastern heartland, assured him that politically motivated scrutiny threats notwithstanding, he is determined to leave Imo State far better than he met it. We pride ourselves as apostles of road revolution because in less than three years since I took over as the governor, this administration has done more than 105 roads across the 27 local governments of the state. Under our prosperity agenda, we intend to connect all communities in the state with motorable roads before the end of our first term. In the pursuit of this goal, 
We have remained steadfast. We have remained tenacious. And we have remained resilient. Both the governor and the president general of Ahanez and Ibo, Professor George Obiozo, said the southeast zone of Nigeria cannot thank President Buhari enough for giving Ndigbo better sense of belonging. Since the end of the civil war, it is under administration that the federal government will do one project at a cost in excess of 350 billion naira. It has never done by any government before 2015. Today, the second river Niger Bridge is almost completed, awaiting commissioning. Our people are committed to the Nigeria project. We desire a country that provides the platform and opportunities to contribute our utmost best to the growth of our fatherland. Prominent Igbo leaders from across the zone, as well as Deputy Senate President and Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, were present in solidarity. <laughs> President Bari has since returned to Abuja. Adam Musambu, NTA News. And away from Imo, the United States Special Presidential Envoy on Climate, John Kerry, has described as fulfilling and reassuring genuine efforts by President Maud Buhari to bequeath a lasting legacy of transparent and accountable electoral process in the country for posterity. Mr. Kerry, who was former Secretary of State under the Obama administration, stated this at a dinner held in his honor by the Nigerian leader. Again, State House correspondent Adam Musambo brings us details. The United States Presidential Envoy on Climate, Mr. John Kerry, accompanied to the State House by the U.S. Ambassador to Nigeria, Mary Beth Leonard, is here to discuss with President Muhammad Buhari the climate crisis and the role expected of the Biden administration in support of Nigeria's developmental aspirations. Describing capital as critical, Mr. Kerry said the U.S. is mobilizing trillions of dollars and bringing private sector companies to the table on what he called the economic transformation drive that will be bigger than the transformation of the Industrial Revolution. The focus he emphasized is rebuilding of critical infrastructure in various economic sectors so as to enable many more of those in need live a modern life. And I understand the relationship of your, your gas to producing you with revenue to be able to do by yourself some of the things that you need to do. We're fully committed to help Nigeria develop. And, and we would like to see you break out of being an emerging economy to be an emerged economy and, and really close on the road to, to the development necessary. And as Nigerians return to the polls next year to elect new political office holders, the U.S. presidential envoy expressed optimism in the ability of the Buhari administration to deliver a credible and acceptable democratic enterprise. I respect enormously the legacy that you are fighting to leave to your country. Uh, I saw the difference that your efforts and the commission's efforts made by fighting to have an election that was calm, peaceful, in which everybody could participate, and where you could have confidence in the results. I simply want to commend you for making that a goal as you begin to come to the close of your term as president. President Muhammad Buhari expressed Nigeria's appreciation to the United States for its continued support in critical areas of need over the years. His administration, he said, now in his last lap, is committed to making every day count in the delivery of public good. The president enumerated the completion of critical infrastructure projects, net zero emission, energy transition, as well as entrenching a durable democratic culture as major areas of focus for sustainable future of the country. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, U.S. Special Presidential Envoy for Climate, John Kerry, has assured Nigeria of assistance towards achieving her Climate Action Plan for Sustainability. He spoke while witnessing the signing of Clean Energy Demand Initiatives by the Minister of Environment, Mohamed Hassan Abdullahi. Haman Jabani reports that $200 million at the moment is committed to the startup. Energy Demand Initiative allows companies and countries to make decisions to implement the buying or 
the production of green products and accelerate the marketplace creation and transit faster to a clean energy economy in order to deal with the climate crisis. It is geared towards ensuring renewable energy, promote economic growth, and protect the environment. Nigeria signed the agreement to participate in the Green Energy Demand Initiative to ensure sustainability, affordable, and reliable energy supplies. The U.S. Special Presidential Envoy for Climate says is going to take billions of dollars and even trillions of private investment and bring major amounts of capital to the table with technology to help Nigeria move faster to the clean energy economy, which is the future, and all of the citizens of Nigeria will benefit from cleaner air and jobs that will come with the transition. Clean energy demand initiative is a, is a very uh, important effort to try to send a signal to the marketplace and to bring your businesses to the table, uh, your private sector businesses, to be able to help uh, excite the creation of green marketplace. And there is what we need is to not then change the side. How we can just clean energy. And as well as also providing accessible energy, accessible clean energy to folks, particularly a lot of folks in the country. The initiative is expected to reduce poverty, stimulate economic growth, and reduce pollution, while strengthening the availability of clean, reliable, and affordable energy and energy production. Hamad Jabani, NTA News. Similarly, destructive effects of climate change is increasingly demanding greater collaboration among the global community to put an end to greenhouse emission. The global commitment is achieving zero emission by 2050, and the U.S. President's envoy on climate change, John Kerry, is meeting Minister of State for Petroleum Resources to make commitments on issues around energy transition. Ekene Ndulwe reports. Flooding, droughts, wildfires, ravaging communities all over the world. These are ominous signs that climate change is upon the planet, and scientists believe things could get worse if global emissions are not reduced by at least 45%. Nigeria has committed to end greenhouse emissions by 2060, but technology and funding are major challenges. If we come together and collaborate, we probably might be able to create that synergy and uh, that, uh, that funding and also uh, the basis for us to be able to move uh, at the same pace. This meeting between the U.S. envoy and Minister of State for Petroleum Resources ended with positives and collaboration between both countries have been agreed upon. We specifically agreed to a program of technical assistance which we will provide uh, in order to further the hydrocarbon sector methane abatement and decarbonization program, uh, which we're going to work on together. And uh, this initiative is going to be supported by the Department of State's Energy and Mineral Governance Program uh, in order to align with Nigeria's participation in the Global Methane Pledge. A working group has been set up to achieve decarbonization. As they pose in agreement for the lenses, the hope is palpable that the future of the planet is in safe hands. Ekene Ndului, NTA News. Now looking at education, more opportunities are now available for Nigerian students aspiring to study courses in various universities across the United States of America. Usman Ali reports that an education fair was organized by the U.S. mission in Nigeria to showcase choices of the U.S.-based universities to eligible students. Kasisa Obidi is a final year secondary school student. His dream is to study in the University of Maryland, United States. Not only that, he wants to contribute in the building of his fatherland. <laughs> 
dream come true for him and many others with this education fair. Now they've granted us this open gateway which allows us to be able to study in USA and it also it actually promotes more international relationship because I've always wanted to know people from abroad outside the country and now I'm getting the chance to do it and also be able to study abroad. A very good opportunity for me to study abroad because it's like it has always been my dream study abroad. Nigerian students on our campus uh, having Nigerian students as part of our community really enriches our community, makes us stronger, makes our community of inquiring minds that much better um, by their very presence. The U.S. mission in Nigeria says though the global pandemic denied this kind of engagement for two years, but it is impressed with the turnout and interest exhibited. And they want you to succeed. They want you to come back and make a difference uh, in this country. The program is a three-day consultation after which aspiring students can continue the conversation online. Osman Aliu, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. Time for a break. Please stay. <laughs> I'm not stalking him. I'm about to serve better breakfast. Buy any monthly data plan and get up to five gigabytes free to use on social media. Airtel, the smartphone network. Nothing should divide us. Nothing can divide us. And absolutely nothing will divide us. In our togetherness lies our strength, our diverse nature identifies us. Yes, we may not agree socially, politically, and culturally, not even our ideological, religious, or ethnic differences to lead to blushing. Let us draw a leaf from the painful reality of our recent history and give dialogue and negotiation a chance. Let us support our gallant men and women of the armed forces, symbol of our national unity. One people we are, have been, and always will be. Nigeria is my country. Your country, our country. Let us keep our together in peace and unity. They say nothing good comes easy, but with determination and chef focus, Boa Foods finds new ways to put food on many plates. We produce competitively priced sugar, flour, and pasta that are highly sought after by our corporate and trade partners. At Boa Foods, we remain committed to lead with purpose and make a difference by embracing the responsibility to meet Africa's growing food demand. We dare to lead. So can you. Boa Foods. Nourishing life. It's never just your dream, but also those close to you. It's never just your hustle, but also those who believe in you. It's never just your disappointment, but also those who share your hopes. It's never just your ambition, but also those who have faith in you. Which is why it's never your success alone, but also those who stood by you. Bountiful is proudly Nigerian and constantly support Nigerians with consistent quality products for comfort and well-being. With Bountiful, you don't just sleep, we give you the comfort that gets you recharged. Bountiful, the fine art of living. Econa Fest 2022, Nigeria's biggest cultural festival, the festival that unites the nation. Date, 7th to 13th November 2022, at the National Stadium and the Teslim Balogun Stadium, Lagos. For sponsorship and support, please call Ade 0813 415 
Kalum 0803-544-7776. NAFEST, using culture to unite the nation. Chairman, National Festival Planning Committee, announcer. Thank you for staying. Nigeria requires rapid market integration, a collective model, and enhanced trade policies to boost its trade volume globally. Nigerian High Commissioner to the Court of St. James, London, Sarafa Tunji Ishola, emphasized this when he received the Executive Director, Nigerian Export Promotion Council, and his delegation at the Nigerian High Commission in the United Kingdom. Comfort Amodu reports from London. Emerging economies are now taking keen interest in the manufacturing and agro-aligned industries and this has led to projection that the African manufacturing sector could reach $666 billion by 2030. To align with trends, Nigeria must deepen its drive for local industries to meet the growing demand. The good news is that this is achievable, says the Nigerian High Commissioner here in London, but only if the relevant agencies work together for the common good. The Nigerian envoy is advocating greater cooperation between government agencies for ease of business and export. We are trying to maximize the benefit of Brexit. When we after Brexit, um, Africa is the next market. Dr. Ezra Yakosak, Executive Director of Nigerian Expo Promotion Council, is appreciative of the diplomat for the significant impact the Commission is making to strengthen bilateral relations with the host country, affirming the NEPC's resolve to collectively promote trade with key agencies. We're going back as a team to see how we can fix things and see how we can explore the, the window, uh, possibility of getting driving orders uh, from, uh, from Nigeria. Dr. Yakosak adds that the Council is determined to harness the full potential of export for an inclusive and sustainable development of Nigeria's economy. From London, United Kingdom, and for Otamodu, NT News. Late Queen Elizabeth II's coffin to leave Edinburgh to Westminster Palace in London on Tuesday. Obia Gileogwoke reports that mourners have continued to gather to pay their respects in Buckingham Palace. And Elizabeth II's coffin has been flown back to London this Tuesday evening. The coffin is accompanied by Elizabeth's only daughter, Princess Anne. Millions of people gathered to pay their respect to the Queen, whose coffin will be in London's Westminster Hall until her state funeral Monday next week. Meanwhile, King Charles III earlier was in Northern Ireland to meet dignitaries and attend a prayer service at St. Anne's Cathedral before returning to London. And Papua New Guinea pronounced King Charles as its head of state on Tuesday in a ceremony that also honored the late queen in its capital, Port Mosby. Prime Minister James Morropy is expected to meet the king along with other world leaders on Friday. Local media reports that British Crown is also the head of five other Pacific states, Australia, New Zealand, the Solomon Islands, and Tuvalu. Obiageliu Gwake, NTA News. Now in Kenya, Vice President Hiemi Oshibaja has described the inauguration of the fifth president of Kenya, William Ruto, as a celebration of democracy and democratic institutions in Africa. Speaking about the significance of President Ruto's inauguration, which took place at the Moa International Sports Stadium in Nairobi, Kenya, President Oshibajo said it is a celebration of democracy and commends the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission and the Judiciary for ensuring that not only were processes properly followed, but also that justice was done. The Vice President said it was a great example, pleasing to all of the African heads of state and government and their representatives. The ceremony was attended by 20 African heads of state and government. At a celebration of our institutions, institutions that 
uh, under God, democracy, and the rule of law. And I think that what we've seen here in uh, Kenya, and with the swearing in of uh, Dr. Uh, William Ruto, is really evidence of robust institutions doing what they ought to do. So I think it's a great example. It's a great example. And Back home, heading to the courtroom, the Court of Appeal sitting in Abuja has reserved judgment in the appeal of the leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu. Namdi Kanu is seeking the order of the court to squash the remaining seven counts charge preferred against him by the federal government. Dili Atumbi, the judiciary desk, reports. Zim trial of Nam Dikano after his rendition back to Nigeria from Kenya in June 2021, the prosecution filed a 15 count charge against him at the Federal High Court Abuja. During his arraignment, Nam Dikano pleaded not guilty to all the counts. Delivering ruling on the application of Nam Dikano objecting to all the counts, the presiding judge, Justice Binta Nyako, struck out eight of the 15 counts in April 2022. Not satisfied with the retention of the remaining seven counts, counsel to Namdi Kano appealed the interlocutory decision of the court. In the main appeal, Namdi Kano as the appellant is urging the court to dismiss the remaining counts retained by the trial court. The second appeal is the one seeking the bail of Namdi Kano. Hearing the appeal, the three-man panel of justices led by Justice Jimmy Sanke ruled that the motion for bail will abide on the decision of the main appeal. During its adoration, counsel to the appellant, Mike Ezeokume, SAN, urged the court to allow the appeal as the remaining counts did not contain the place of commission of the alleged counts. Counsel to the respondent, David Kasue, pleaded with the court to dismiss the appeal in the interest of justice. Kasue told the court that the rendition of the appellant was in line with the due process of the law. And we are here to say intermediate court, court of appeal, strike out this remaining seven counts because the lower court never calmly looked at the documentary evidence we placed before it. Counsel to so the respondent declined comment. At the lower court, the prosecution is yet to open its case in the alleged terrorism trial against Namdi Kanu. In Abuja, Dele Atumbi, NTA News. In other news, the federal government has inaugurated an 11-member Railway Security Committee. Inaugurating the committee, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Transportation, Dr. Magdalene Ajani, said the committee is expected to develop a comprehensive report on the incident of 28th March 2022 and October 20, 2021, and make recommendations to prevent future occurrences of a similar incident. The committee is responsible for providing concrete measures to safeguard passengers and railway infrastructure across the country. Members of the committee are drawn from the Ministry of Transportation, civil society organizations, the Defence Headquarters, the Nigerian Army and the Nigerian Air Force. The committee is chaired by the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Transportation, Dr. Magdalene Ajani. In view of the prevailing security challenges across the country, the Nigerian Army has reassured of a secure environment during the forthcoming 2023 general elections. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, re-echoed this at the third quarter Chief of Army Staff conference holding in Abuja. Defence correspondent Ismail Musa has details. Various security challenges truncating socioeconomic activities in different parts of the country. To stand these stress, Army principal officers, commanders and heads of formations assembled to appraise its activities and to strategize to enhance ongoing operations. The troops deployed in the South-South region under Operation Delta C have continued to perform credibly with the regimented joint operations leading to the arrest of several suspects and their sponsors. Our offensive operation in the Northwest and North Central regions have also been intensified. Troops in conjunction with Nigerian Air Force have continued to neutralize bandits and destroy their hideouts. Preparatory to 2023 general elections, the Nigerian Army has revealed its rules of engagement and code of conduct for its personnel on election security. We have reviewed that document 
take into cognizance recent happenings and what should be done and judge them from our past experiences. The Army acknowledged support from other services and security agencies. In Abuja, Ismail Musa, NT News. Now, talking politics, Senator Magnus Abe, governorship candidate of the Social Democratic Party in River State, says non-indigents in every state in Nigeria deserve justice, fairness and equal opportunities. Senator Abe spoke at the inauguration of the Executive Committee of Non-Indigenous Members of Social Democratic Party in Rivers State. Emmanuel Lerner reports that the SDP governorship candidate also attended the 50th anniversary celebration of Greater Evangelism World Crusade in Port Harcourt. Over the years, non-indigents in River State have always played active roles in the politics of the state. Ahead of the 2023 general elections, the non-indigents are leaving nothing to chance as they have joined forces with the Social Democratic Party to ensure the governorship candidate of the party emerges in the 2023 elections. Senator Magnus Abe at the inauguration of the Executive Committee of Non-Indigents in the Social Democratic Party noted that having spent most of their lives in the state, they deserve to be given the needed support to succeed in the state. If you live here, you vote here, you train your children here, you build your house here, you have your home here, you are contributing here, you are a river man and woman. The non-indigents who re-echoed their commitment to the progress and development of the state assured that they will use the PBCs to ensure the SDP governorship candidate emerges victorious in the 2023 elections. And the PBCs are abolished. We will have a lot of us now of it. We are going to use it on that day and you will be surprised. Meanwhile, Senator Magnus Abe has described the 50th anniversary celebration of Greater Evangelism World Crusade as a significant occasion to celebrate Pentecostalism and freedom of religion in South-South Nigeria. He made the remark at the launch of late Apostle G.D. Numbere Foundation as part of activities to mark the anniversary celebration in Port Harcourt. Emmanuel Lene, NTA News. Looking at other issues now, soccer has come the way of indigent children in nursery and primary school at Ewo. Eastern Central Local Government Area of Edo State, following the inauguration of Inner City Mission School for academic usage. The school was built by Reverend Chris Oyakilome of Christ Embassy with free education. Rosemary Ibrahim has details. In the academic facilities of Inner City Nursery and Primary Mission School at Ewu, the founder of the school, Pastor Chris Oyakilome, the general overseer of Christ Embassy worldwide, set the vision to establish the mission school, which provides free tuition fees, including school kids and learning materials for indigent school children from Ewu community and environs, is to get equal access to a sound educational content, thereby equipping them with solid foundational knowledge, which has the potential to mold them into profitable adults who will contribute to the development of the nation. The founder was represented by the executive director of the Inner City Mission School, esteemed Pastor Yemisi Kudi Himbu. So this is the first in the Joe State, is the largest that we've done, and we're looking forward to doing even more by the power of God's Spirit. And it's, it's because of the importance of education, the importance that the, uh, the Reverend Chris Oh, yeah, Kilome as attached to education. The director of Inner City Mission School, Ewu, esteemed Pastor Omo Alabi, said Inner City Mission School will accommodate over 350 pupils with free breakfast and lunch, as well as qualified teachers in a serene learning environment. The Foundation International has been working towards creating an enabling environment where Child survives and lives above poverty, irrespective of race, color, religion, and gender. I want to appeal to young that education 
should not be taken for granted. Free school keys and learning materials were given to the pupils of the school in Ewu. Rosemary Ibrahim, NTA News. Mamuda Industries Nigeria Limited, producers of Pop Cola and other brands of beverages, have continued to record bold business breakthroughs, thereby complementing government strides towards boosting the economy by introducing more products into the Nigerian market and creating good paying jobs. Chairman of the company, Hassan Hamoud, disclosed at the first anniversary of Pop Cola in Kano that more are in the kitty for the delights of Nigerians. Muhammad Ali reports. This is not just a celebration of anniversary of a brand, it is more of celebration of a bold feat proudly born in Nigeria. A year ago, Pop Cola and its allied brands were introduced to the market to meet the need of consumers with value added advantages of affordability and assorted tastes that are beyond other beverages. With personalities cutting across different strata of the society in attendance at the one year anniversary, there could not have been a better testament to the success of these pure Nigerian brands in the Nigerian market. Kano State Deputy Governor Nasri Yusuf Gauna is particularly elated by the zeal of Mamuda Industries towards not only improving the economy of the state and Nigeria at large, but providing job opportunities to thousands of youth. For people like Hassan to come and set up industries like this, and uh, he's doing more. He believes in the state, and by extension, he believes in the country. And that is why he's putting so much money in investing, and uh, by so doing, he's giving employment to a lot of people. We are first year anniversary. Many people thought that Mamuda will not make it, but Mamuda is here to stay. Mamuda is here to grow. You can see customers from all. All over the country they came because they're in love with the product. Distributors of Pop Cola products were honored with 2021 Mamuda Beverages Award. We normally used to travel far to Lagos and purchase this, this kind of product, but now it's easy. it has come to our doorstep here in Kano. There is a further good news that Mamuda detergent is on the way for Nigerians. <laughs> From Kano, Muhammad Ali, NTA News. And from Kano, we head to Lagos, where Adeola is standing by to give us more news. Adeola, it's over to you. Thank you, Yere. Sustaining the fight against maritime crimes and offenders has become more mandatory, especially with the feat achieved that has taken the country's piracy prevalence to zero. This is the agreement of maritime stakeholders in Lagos, where it was suggested that the Niger Immigration Service should be incorporated into the Deep Blue Project. Michael Olaleye reports and exit points, granting passes to the serving crew and offering technical assistance in checking security breaches within the port community. The Nigeria Immigration Service also plays documentation role in the maritime space. This interaction with the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA, is to deepen in conversation on how best to promote a well-regulated and secured environment. The Controller General of the Nigeria Immigration Service, who described the recent flag off of the maritime labor e registration as crucial to digitizing the maritime safety environment for enhanced data rendition and security, wants more initiatives channeled towards document harmonization. As government agencies, we need to deepen conversations on how to streamline our process and procedures to ensure that we do not allow unnecessary duplications. Or overlap of functions. So the Director General of NIMASA, maritime business will have been impossible without NIS based on its mandate of identifying nationalities which has become more broadened with the coming on board of the suppression of piracy and other maritime offenses act 2019 to include giving information on criminals at sea and offering necessary advice while calling on the agency to do more in the area of addressing the issue of porous borders the director general said nis and nimasa 
we jointly operate a single platform. We should have a software system of their needs that we will incorporate it into the command and control so that they can have an interface that connect to their own mandate and see how they can improve in what they are doing. To consolidate its fight against maritime crimes, the agency says it is reaching out to countries in the Gulf of Guinea on the need to agree and utilize a single document in the prosecution of offenders. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News. World-renowned provider of high-quality air conditioning solutions, Dike in Middle East and Africa, in partnership with Atiwa Tech, a not-for-profit vocational training school, has inaugurated its first development center in Africa. The facility, located in Lagos, is expected to boost technical, vocational, and educational skills of Nigerian youths to be solution providers in the industry. Nigeria's population of more than 200 million people is an economic prospect with array of opportunities waiting to be tapped. We try to give our know-how, skill, every, everything to the African people. So we decided that Etiwar is one of the best partners to establish together with collaboration with Daikin. This reality is what Daikin Middle East and Africa in partnership with Etiwa Tech is capitalizing on to significantly close the gap in technical, vocational and educational training in the country by producing world-class technicians and installers in the first development center in Nigeria. When we make investment, it's not only product, just to bring the uh, suitable product to this market. We also have to uh, design the whole ecosystem which means that who will install, who will give the after say service. Daikin brings to the table a lot of expertise and knowledge in HVAC. Um, as a technical vocational training center, we offer training in air conditioning and in HVAC. Um, and so they've been able to donate um, really advanced um, air conditioning systems, namely the VRV system, um, inverter ACs as well, and practice stands. Some of the trainees attested to the fact that they are receiving live improving skills at no cost. In this uh, program, I've actually learned a lot about entrepreneurship. It's free. I paid nothing. All they need from us is to pay attention. The partners taught the various technical and vocational units to have an assessment of the training facilities. Daikin Middle Eastern Africa and Etiwa Tech collaboration is currently empowering about 80 Nigerian youths who at the end of their training will help develop the needed manpower skills to meet the ever dynamic world of innovation. And those are the reports from Lagos. Do not forget that you can still follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. The network news will continue after this timeout to stay. Good morning, Nigeria. Year after year, they have informed, educated, and entertained us when you needed information, knowledge, or an escape. From generation to generation, the Nigerian broadcasting industry has worked tirelessly to serve you. And now, this service will finally be recognized. Right. This November, broadcasters all over Nigeria will gather for the maiden edition of the Nigerian Broadcasting Awards, an award ceremony set to reward hard work and unflinching excellence in the broadcast media. They have served and are still serving. It's time to say thank you. This award is organized by the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria. Bye. For more details, log on to www.tnbawards.ng and follow social media handles at Awards. Every morning is an opportunity to take your hustle to the next level. Every morning is one day closer to your mission. So, make every morning count. Come after come. Morning after morning. Start strong. Finish strong. Nescafe. Good 
management and staff of NTA announced the death of our former chairman board of directors, Chiduro Jaye Onabule, the Jagomolu of Ijebuland, who died on the 16th of August, 2022. He was aged 83. Burial arrangements as announced by the family. Wednesday, 14th September, 2022. Service of songs and tributes at Shell Hall, Muson Centre, Onika, Lagos. Time, 4.30 p.m. Thursday, 15th September, 2022. Christian Wake at Grand Hain and Seals Hotel. 3. Gateway Stadium Road, GRA, Ijebode, Ogun State. Time, 4.30 p.m. Friday, 16th September, 2022. Funeral service at the Cathedral Church of Our Savior, in Taolowa, Joda, Ijasi, Ijebode, Ogun State. Time, 9.30 a.m. Friday, 16th September, 2022. Entertainment of guests at DC Rodipe Hall. GRA, Igweba Road, Ijebu Ode, Ogun State. Announcer, Abdulhamid Saleh Udemos, Acting Director General, NTA. Welcome back. President Mohamed Buhari rejoices with Astute Financial Services Export and Credit Risk Management Specialist, Mrs. Mosun Belu Olushoga as she turns 65, wishing her longer life in good health and further service to God and humanity. A statement by the Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adesino, indicates that the President believes the professional and career path of Belu Olushaga, the woman of many first, first female chairman, managing director and pro-chancellor of numerous banks and universities, should inspire the younger generation. The president urges the celebrants to shine the light continuously so that the younger generation can be inspired and find the way. President Muhammad Buhari says he is fully committed to deepening Nigeria's quest for full diversification to meet the nation's infrastructure demands. This was contained in his message to the conference of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. Bia Katung Babatunde reports. The local and global economies have gradually become two sides of a coin, taking distinct position in all transactions. Local practices for global consumption is the focus here, and access to credit remains pivotal. Nigeria has 64 million unbanked adults, according to data from the World Bank. This means banking services are far away from a good number of citizens. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, so I'm standing in the shoes of Mr. President, Mr. President, says government is working to change uh, this narrative. The Minister of Terrorism and Banditry has been playing in our country over the years. However, government is committed to securing lives and property within the country and will not relent in ensuring a safe and secure environment for citizens as well as productive activities to thrive. Always about taking a slice from a closed oil-driven export pipe, but also about helping Nigerians to create opportunity through opening up and supporting markets. Experts say building the Nigerian economy requires a holistic approach. It will serve as a veritable uh, tool in uh, taking policies or decisions that will help to move the banking industry forward. Knowledge and innovation is bringing about a new wave of revolution that will change the landscape of financial services sector. Changing times, they say, require new ways of thinking. And Nigeria is poised to do just that. In Abuja, we are cutting Baba today. NTA News. Meanwhile, professionals and stakeholders in the accounting profession are in Abuja, brainstorming on how Nigeria and Africa should address common challenges. At the 27th Conference of the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, ANAN, emphasis was on the urgent need to diversify the economies of Africa and stimulate the informal sector for development toward achieving sustainable social economic transformation. Mopilang Dakok reports. For 27 years, Anan has been holding its annual conference to serve as a springboard for launching ideas, 
international and global discourse, especially as it concerns finance and the economy. This year, the conference presented two themes. Minister of State, Budget and National Planning, who stood in for President Buhari, said the themes are significant as they are geared towards encouraging discussions on Nigeria and Africa's developmental paths. We need about $2.3 trillion in 23 years to fill the infrastructure gap. So under such a situation, do you fold your arms and say, that you will not concentrate on increasing your revenue. Looking at African uh, Agenda 2063, put together by African Union, then we looked closer home. We now look at economic diversification and the informal sector. Mining, entrepreneurship, and the capital markets on the continent are taking center stage here as critical components for attaining the African Union's Agenda 2063. We should really be talking about Agenda 2063, which is looking at Africa between now and the year 2063. It is much more tailored towards making Africa to be a better place. A book, The Anand Story, and a membership register were launched commemorating Anand at 40. The conference should produce a blueprint that would wake the potential of Nigeria and Africa to create a sustainable society. In Abuja, Muplang, Dakok, NTNE. Let's have more business news and Musa Boboker is here. Thank you, Ayuri. Uh, oil prices fell on Tuesday and choppy trading reversing earlier gains as U.S. consumer prices unexpectedly rose in August. Given uh, cover for the U.S. Federal Reserve to deliver another hefty interest rate increase next week, CNBC oil updates showed Brent futures for November ended the day at uh, $93.17 per barrel for a loss of 0.88 percent. U.S. could settle 47 cents lower at $87.31 per barrel. And now to capital market, the equities market closed Tuesday trading session flat. The all share index settled at 49,627.72 basis points and market capitalization at 26.7 trillion naira. 160 million shares worth 1.48 billion naira exchange hands in 3,847 deals. Zenith Bank, Cotville and Transcope dominated the activity chart. Now that's it. The news continues after the break. Forget last season. Forget the winners and the losers. Forget every moment that stole the show. Because this is a brand new season on Gold TV. And it's going to be bigger and better than any season before it. With over seven leagues and top competitions, plus a wild card. Make sure you get the best seats in the house this new football season. Get a decoder, go tenner, plus one month Go TV Max for 6,900 Naira only. Bigger season, greater football. Go TV. Love it. Uh -uh. Oh boy, this one where I read. You carry machet, you see carry gun. Wait till you want to take and do something. After the panel like this, I don't fight. I don't fight. Oh boy, calm down. Calm see, down now. Like this, eh? see, like this. Eh? At the ghost catalogs of businesses. You don't say they take our people, our people businesses, eh? You don't see them. See, and they go there, they go to Africa, and they go like, and they go to them better credit. They never see anything. They never see anything. If, if you destroy their own for yeah, and they destroy your people for that side, especially that your brother where they send you money, that way don't block up. Oh. How you go take survive? See, this way talk not true. But I see the vex. I see the vex. Boy, the calm vex. down. Make we embrace peace. We peace and unity. Everybody, my people. Everybody. Make we go body with peace and unity. Oh. Make we learn to live as brothers and sisters so that we country go feel move go permanent sides. This message not from the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Our pastors, our imams, in every church, in every mosque. Please realize that in the course of praying for peaceful and transparent elections, we all have duties beyond prayers. If we want a stable society before, during, and after the elections, what should you be saying to those that worship with you? All Sundays, 
Fridays and all Fridays, you are saddled with the responsibility of bringing up good generations. It is therefore your duty to both man and God to ensure peace all the time. No matter about elections alone, people talk to people and people listen. Talk to your followers. Make them listen to ensure peaceful 2023 elections. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Let's have a bit of sports now. Eastern Naval Command of the Nigerian Navy has emerged the overall best command in the 12th edition of the Naval Games. The Eastern Naval Command also defeated their counterparts from the Central Naval Command in the football event through penalties after a goalless regulation time. Nigerian customs won the male and female relays, while the Nigerian police humiliated the Nigerian Air Force in the tug of war. Football after 12 quarterfinal fixtures decided on Monday in the second edition of the Betsy Obasike Women's Football Preseason Tournament in Benin City, Edo State, four teams scaled through to the semifinals built for Wednesday at the Samuel Ubumidia Stadium. FC Robo Queens meets Delta Queens while Edo Queens play Nasarawa Amazons. I strongly believe that uh, uh, we, we, we are going into the game as if we don't have another game. So we are going to give our all. To fencing, Nigerian Stoye Shawari has emerged champion of the 2022 Nightmen AP Satellite Fencing Tournament, which ended in Lagos. Toye beat Moshore Babalola 15-11 in an all-Nigeria finals. This will be the first time Nigeria will be hosting an international senior championship to commemorate the World Fencing Day. The Nigerian Fencing Federation also created events for the younger ones to compete. It's actually one of the four cardinal points that we have within a federation, um, which is to host international tournaments annually. So this is also an annual event, and so we'll be hosting it each year. Well, I think the attention it brings uh, to, to the nation, to our federation, the recognition it gives us internationally. With sports update, Gift George, NTA News. Our sports done. We're done with the network news tonight. Many thanks for watching. And please remember that rape is a crime. To the needful, I'm Yen Ray John. Have a good night. Wonderful hours a day, seven days a week. You can watch ATA International live on your TV, computer, iPad, tablet, and phone. Log on to visiontv.co.uk and click on entertainment. Then NTAI. You can also download the iOS or Android app on your mobile devices to watch NTA International on the go anywhere in the world. NTA International. Your window to the world. Thanks to